This is exercise number two for getting ready for the Microsoft Office Specialist 200 Excel Associate Certification Exam. It is also assignment number two for Management 1400. And as part of section one of the certification, creating and managing worksheets and workbooks. So to begin with, make sure you have downloaded the Excel file S2, the bakery. And once you've downloaded it, it doesn't matter where we've opened it on uh, which sheet or page. Uh, down here at the bottom, uh, we have our different sheet names. And the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a new worksheet. So to add a new worksheet, go ahead and click this plus button down here at the bottom. To the right of our other worksheet names, just click the plus button. And it adds says new sheet and it comes up with sheet one. And what we want to do is we want to rename that sheet. So to rename it, if we're anywhere else, we can always click on it. Right click, click rename, and we're going to rename this forecast. And enter. So that is one of the things that you will have to do on your certification is rename a worksheet. The other thing is uh, we can also add color to our tabs. So we're going to add a color to our worksheet tabs. So we're going to go ahead and do that there on forecast. Go ahead and right click on forecast again and click tab color. And in this case, it's going to ask you for a very specific color. It's going to ask you to choose like blue accent five, darker 25. And that's here to the right. So when they ask you that, you might have to scroll around for a little bit to find the color. So there on the right, we have blue accent five, darker 25. Uh, go ahead and click on that. And now if we click off anywhere, we can see that uh, forecast um, tab actually has color to it. So you can color your tabs, which would make it just easier to find. The other thing that you're going to have to do is to delete content in a named range. And so one of the ways to find uh, ranges and you're going to practice this more often is up here on the left, we have uh, our, our name box. So you, we already know that up here on the top, these are our um, tabs over here. So when we say go to the home tab or page layout, this is called the ribbon down here in the middle. These are called your groupings or groups is how your um, functions inside a ribbon are grouped. Underneath that, you have your name box, which is this box right here. Then you have your formula or function bar line, and then your columns and rows and cells. So right here, we're going to do the drop down in the name box. This is a way to quickly go to somewhere. We're going to click on total January, and that's going to jump us over here uh, to our data tab, our data sheet. And we have this information here, total for January. And there's a difference between deleting data or erasing it. We're going to delete it. So while that's uh, highlighted there, hit delete on your keyboard. And that will actually delete the data. And you will have a practice to do that on yours. The other is while we're here in our data worksheet, uh, we're going to adjust columns uh, width. So you can adjust the column width and the row height. And there's a couple ways to do this. So right here in column A, I can click on column A and highlight that whole column. And notice as I move my cursor from A to B, I go from a down arrow to a double arrow pointing in both directions. And I can adjust my column width this way and that way, doesn't matter. The other thing is between A and B, if I have my double arrows, I can also double click and it will automatically resize the column to whatever is um, the greatest number of characters in width in that column. But sometimes, and for your exam, we're going to set the column width. So here in the data worksheet, we're going to highlight column A. So put your cursor there on column A and click. And now we have all of column A highlighted. If we're not on the home tab, make sure we're on the home tab. And then to the right, we're going to click on format in our cells grouping. Here on the right, click the drop down. And it's saying column width. We could do a default width. We can auto fit it. Auto fitting here is the same thing we did with the double click. Or I can click on column width. And in this case, we want to set our column width according to our instructions to 15. And click OK. And we can also do that with row heights and things like that. But in this case, we're going to just practice our column width. 
we have completed number four of the 10 things we're going to do here in our assignment. Number five is something very simple too, is just adjusting the order of worksheets. So I see this a lot uh, where you're building worksheets and stuff and that your final project is the last worksheet way out. And maybe you should actually make it the first worksheet. So when you're presenting, it's easy to get to, or if you're sharing your data. So we're going to adjust the order of the worksheet. So if we go down here to the bottom and we're going to move um, the summary tab over to between chart and data. Okay. So we can right click or left click on our summary tab and notice as I'm moving, I have this little sheet thing and then we have our arrow down there. So as I move that arrow moves and that arrow now is between the chart and data tab and that's where we want it to go. So we now have the order of chart, summary, data, and forecast. So that's what we want to do on our uh, adjusting the order of the worksheet. Okay. So we've completed step number five. We're going to go to step number six. And this is actually inserting a hyperlink. So you can link almost any data, any text or things like that in Excel uh, to a website. So right now we're going to actually hyperlink the picture and that is in our summary tab right here uh, so on this the bakery we have our annual sales report we got a nice little picture here uh, and we want to link the picture because let's say i'm sending this file to my accountant to have them do things but i also want them to buy from my bakery and they click on the cupcake and it goes to my website so in this case we're just going to right click on the cupcake picture inside our summary tab and notice down here about halfway down the middle we have this uh, pop-up that came up on link we're going to choose link and it can go to a recent item but we're going to scroll down to the bottom and down here at the bottom you'll see where it will say insert link we want to choose insert link and then we have a new pop-up here and so we can uh, uh, link to existing files or other things like that and in this case uh, right here we have a link to an existing file and worksheet and the reason why we're seeing it this way is because I've got this um, set to high so it's easier to see but we want to do existing file and then down here on our address bar in this case on your exam it will give you the address so on your exam just copy and paste that address so you don't misspell it but in this case i'm just going to add the university address uh, uvu.edu https and i got to add another t for hypertext protocol okay and click ok and if we've done this right you'll see if i click on this it's verifying it and it takes us to a website so click out of there and we've completed step number six. Okay. Just make sure that when you copy and paste on your exam, uh, you don't add the quotation marks, <laughs> but add all the stuff in between the quotation marks. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to hide a worksheet. So if we were to um, send this out to somebody or if we're presenting on it, sometimes we just want to hide the worksheet. Uh, that we've been working on. Uh, in this case, we're going to hide the data worksheet. We can just right click on data and click hide. By the way, there's two ways to unhide this. Uh, you can click on a tab down here, right click, and it'll choose unhide. And notice I have one worksheet that's hidden. That's the data worksheet. I can click OK and unhide it. Now I'll hide it again. Or I can go up here to my home tab, format, and I've got my visibility or hide and unhide. So you can hide columns and rows and sheets. And so I can come in here and go, oh, unhide sheets and say, oh, I've got a hidden sheet there, data, and bring it up. But uh, for the deliverable on this assignment and for your practice, go ahead and right click on data and click hide and hide that worksheet. Okay, that completed step number seven. We're going to move on to step number eight. And this is working with document properties. Uh, and we can actually rename the company name of an entire worksheet to distinguish between workbooks or files or 
or those type of things. So we want to go ahead and click the file button up here on the very top, the file tab. It's going to pop up. We want to choose info. And on one of the things over here is we want to change the company name. And notice that we don't have anything here on company name. So we can go down here to the bottom right on related documents, show all properties. And up here at the top, now we actually have where it says company and we can specify the company name and you'll need to do this on your Microsoft certification exam. And so in this case, it's just called the bakery is our company. It's not Andrew's bakery or Williams bakery. It is the bakery and click enter. And we just click anywhere else out of there. And now this worksheet, the company name has been changed to the bakery. While we're in here too, uh, one of the things we're going to do is it says for part of your exam and stuff and on the instructions, if you have a copy of the instruction page or, or on your assignment page, it asks you to locate and remove personal information. Maybe you want to share this but not have any personal information. As an example, uh, depending upon where you're at, you can hyperlink uh, to things or people and stuff like that. So you want to remove your personal information. If we've gotten out of here, if we've escaped or gone back, we go into and click the file button again. We click info. And on this case, we're going to choose inspect uh, the document uh, on check for issues. We're going to inspect the document. Okay. And on this, we're going to check for issues. We're going to choose inspect the document. Okay. And it says you want to make sure because once you remove data, it can't be restored. You'd have to save it. So yes. And in this case, we're just going to scroll down. Okay. And we're going to ask it to inspect. So it's inspecting the document and it found uh, that there were certain things in the document properties uh, that you don't necessarily always want to sh share. So we have a red exclamation point right there. And for this assignment, we're going to choose remove all. Okay. And on hidden worksheets, we're going to leave that. We're not going to click remove all. And we can reinspect the document, inspect. And now we don't have an exclamation on personal information. Go ahead and leave the hidden worksheet there. And now we go ahead and hit close. And we've done number nine on this. Step number 10 is we're going to inspect the document again for accessibility errors, uh, things that might uh, be hard. So if you're colorblind and you're using like blue on red or you're using the wrong colors, uh, colorblind people can't see that. Or if you're hard of hearing or, or, your, or your sight is bad, you have bad eyesight, uh, there's things you can do in Excel that it will, uh, if you have a graph or something like that, it will tell you audibly what that graph is. And so we can, we can check for those issues. So we're going to go ahead and click File again info if we have if we got out of there and we're going to click on check for issues again but this time we're going to choose check accessibility and notice here for the right on the right side it's got missing object description okay so we're going to go ahead and click that and it says on chart one uh, we have um, missing object uh, inspection so we're going to click on that and it said recommended actions we can mark this as decorative, uh, which means if somebody's working on this and they they have bad eyesight, that they won't get an audible telling them what the, the chart is about. Uh, but we want to add a description so uh, Excel can tell them maybe what it's about. So how would you describe this object and its content to someone who is blind or low vision? So the subject in details, the setting, the actions. In this case, uh, one to two detailed sentences recommended. We're going to actually keep it short because it will tell you on your assignment uh, what you should do. And we're just going to call this um, chart of employee sales. And if we want to be more descriptive, we can do chart of employee sales by month. And if we want to be more descriptive, we could add the year and things like that. But we're not doing that on this. We're just prepping for the exam. And so, uh, and go ahead and click enter. And then we can uh, move out of there. And if we wanted to, we can check it again. But we see here inspection results, no accessibility issues found. 
and we can click out of there on an X. And that was step number 10. So that's all we had to do on this assignment. Uh, exercise number two. Uh, so those of you that are taking the management 1400 class at this time, go ahead and save your file, add your last name and first name, and then upload it to the appropriate uh, page uh, for grading. And those of you here that are just practicing to get ready for your MOS 200 Excel certification exam, thank you for joining us.